head is white, especially when it's got something that it is white relative to. So then a um, by having this part be dark, uh, then the white of that head will, will pop out relative to that. By, by being willing to, now depending on what type of pencil you're using, if you're using a very hard pencil, um, you can't, even no matter how hard you push, you can't get things really, really dark. Um, can I borrow some of this white pencil? Oh, white one? It wasn't, sorry. some backup for that idea. So how would you background that with the white head and the dark eyes? So what I would do with this is I would background it by having the background be the color of the paper. Mm -hmm. Right? And so maybe my three values are here. One, two, three. Keep it really simple. And I might also use the color of the paper to be the beat. So last one, and this one really will only be there for three minutes. Um, and yeah, because then I've got a couple of other things to, to, to show you. But this is the, the last sort of colored pencil. But with this, you see, are you out here? Oh. I see you're drawing. Um, sure. Um, what what she's doing? Yeah. <coughs> I like it. It's, it's got the, 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 and the proportions are right on this. Right? Yeah. That works. This is summer or winter? Winter. Because you've got dead trees in the background, or bare trees. And then this guy, yeah, looks really fluffy. <laughs> This approach of drawing with uh, on toned paper, even if your only tools are a graphite pencil and a white pencil, allows you to dramatically increase the range of values that, uh, or not necessarily increase the range of values, to be more deliberate about where those, those values are on your paper. Um, to make a choice, it's fun to be able to choose where you want to pull the lights. Um, and uh, 
That's one of the advantages that oil painters have in doing their stuff. If they want something to be white, a little white stripe across that, they draw a little white stripe across it. All the rest of us pencil people out there have to just make everything dark around that little white stripe. Now this allows us to also kind of go in that direction. If you do like brown paper, uh, you might want to get yourself a brown very thin pencil. Um, they're the kind of colored pencils with a very um, strong, sturdy tip that doesn't get dull really fast. Um, you get a dark brown pencil and then you're drawing on the brown paper with the dark brown pencil. It's really pretty. Um, on the gray paper, um, I'll often do um, just use my graphite pencil. this way. Um, so, um, so here's a couple of thoughts. One, practice. Play with these ideas. Um, you can either get some pictures of raptors off the web. Um, again, seeingbirds.com is the website of Vishil Kosla, uh, who's one of our nature sketching people. Uh, he's got a lot of raptor pictures on there. Um, you can visit zoos. Uh, San Francisco Zoo has a lot of raptors. Also rehabilitation centers, such as Wild Care or the, in, in Walnut, on Walnut Creek, there's the Lindsay Wildlife Museum. They've got all these birds who are not going to be able to fly again, and um, you can draw them. Um, and right now is an amazing time to be drawing and sketching birds in the Bay Area, uh, raptors especially. The migration is coming right through, and uh, you can take advantage of that. As winter rolls in, there's also <laughs> going to be a whole bunch of uh, raptors uh, nesting, or not nesting, but uh, spending the winter up in the Sacramento Valley. And so you can go bob around on the wildlife refuges there. It's like every bush has its raptor. And all the voles out there. Yeah. All right. So we have ten minutes left. And in that time, I want to take you through a few of the little detail points about raptors. And um, but what I don't want you to do is think that th th this comes intentionally at the end because I thought we may not have time for this and it's less important than the values and the basic shape. But we often get really, really, really excited about and overemphasize the details and that can kill a drawing. So remember those, 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 um, so those, those hawk drawings I did? There was just like a little line and that was the whole beak. There was no eye drawn on the thing. Um, Sometimes when you know that something is there, we draw it in because it's supposed to be there, but from this distance, we can't really see it. My general rule of thumb is if I can't really see it from back here, I don't draw it. So um, let's take a look at some details, starting with the, the, the head of the bird. Um, so beaks are really, really cool. We've already talked about how we've got a tendency to exaggerate it and go overkill it. So you have these big toucan beaks that everybody draws on their raptors. Be uh, aware of that and, and avoid that problem. The beaks has, has a few different interesting parts. There's the hard black part at the end with the hook on it. 
there is, in towards the face, a piece of an area with sort of soft skin covering the outside of it that um, often is bright yellow, and that can go back into a little corner of the mouth, making a little wedge back towards the eye. The nostril is located in that little section there. The eye may be closer to the front of the face than you would expect, so look at that distance on your bird. It's a good idea to compare this distance with that distance on the bird that you're actually looking at. That's easier on a photograph. Harder on a bird in the field that's doing that. The eyes bear a little bit of mention. A lot of raptors have a little shelf over their eye that partially shades their eye. It's like having a little visor like this. That's what gives them that serious kind of mean, intense look. And so what a lot, uh, so you can see that here. Notice how that casts a shadow down over the eye. I think the best way of suggesting this with your bird eye, if this is my, 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 my bird eye, um, the way we see that is as a shadow over that part of the eye. Um, I find that's a lot better than drawing a little line 